By 1987, with replacement guitarist Dave Navarro also leaving the band, the Red Hot Chili Peppers appeared to be going nowhere. Then rumours started to surface that John Frusciante might still have something to offer. I've been in touch with him the whole time. I mean, the whole time that he wasn't in the band, I had been friends with him. Um, not as consistently and as intimately as, as we had been in the past, but I maintained a friendship with him, and there, never, there was never any bad feelings between us. We were always... There was always respect and love between us. Things weren't working out with Dave Navarro, and we parted ways with him. And uh, it just so happened at that same time that John was get, had stopped doing drugs, and I thought he might be interested in being in the band again. And I went over to his house and asked him, and he started crying and said yes. We both started crying. Well, that was weird. Unexpected. Last thing in the world that I would have ever expected. It was as close to someone coming back from the grave and re-entering your life as I think I could ever get. Um, and that's not to say he was dead. You know, he might have been sort of dormant in a way. Um, but the likelihood of him re-entering this band and re-entering my life as a friend was really the last thing in the world. And in a, in a way, it gives me faith in the, you know, the power of thought and the power of prayer and just those kind of vibrations that you send out into the universe because I definitely, as much as I had disdain for him for a while, I definitely prayed for him a lot. I was like, I'm not even sure what I believe in, but whatever it is, I'm going to pray just in case because this guy's hurting and I don't want him to die. And it wasn't because I didn't want him to die for my sake. I just, I just kind of wanted him to, to have a second chance. Frusciante's return coincided with an almost immediate return to form and inspired Californication, Van's seventh and possibly best ever album. Rusty or not, he still remains the person with whom the band does its best work. He was rusty. His energy was beautiful, but his guitar playing was rusty. He hadn't played for a long time. Um, but I wasn't really surprised. I kind of had a lot of optimism about that. You know, the first time we played, it was good, and it was right, and it fit, and it, I, we all had the feeling like, okay, we can write music together again. I mean, when John and I sit down and jam, we come up with stuff in a, in a minute, you know, it's just, we just, uh, sort of the nature of who we are, our, our curiosity as musicians, and our, uh, just the way that we fit together. We had a lot of work to do, and, um, and we were just kind of really you know, putting on the blue collars and punching the time clock and, and going into the garage every day. And, uh, and time passed quickly, you know, almost without enough time to reflect in the moment of what was happening. And we just went straight into the studio and recorded and recorded and recorded. And, you know, it was a free-flowing moment for us. The band's latest album, by the way, is their most melodic to date. It continues in many ways where Californication left off, but musically represents a further broadening of their sound. In terms of the essence of what By The Way is, it's just a continued growth and momentum of what we're doing with Californication. Um, the thing that I think is a lot different with By The Way, uh, aesthetically, is really the way that John wanted to record. I mean, he made a real conscious decision to uh, instead of just play one live guitar track, which was had maybe maybe two, he decided to layer many guitars on each song. And as well, he wanted to play keyboards, you know, synthesizers on songs, which he did. And he really wanted to uh, multi. He really got into studying doo-wop groups and pop girl pop groups of the '60s and stuff, and the Beach Boys and uh, background vocal harmonies. So he really wanted to do a lot of that. And he did it, and that aesthetically gives the songs a different feeling, you know, different sheen. It's now almost 20 years since the Red Hot Chili Peppers first emerged from L.A., and today they are more creative and more popular than at any time in their history. You wonder where it might lead next. I want to let it go where it wants to go. And I want to just get together and, and, uh, and do what we do, which is improvise and jam and be together and, and show up in rehearsal spaces on sunny days and, and, uh, and just play music and, and see where it goes. And that's the way I like to look at it, um, because every time we do that, every time we get together to maybe rehearse for a show or whatever, we, we usually end up just playing for the sake of playing. And it always sounds like songs and new music and things worthy of recording and working on and, you know, arranging. So 
it's more I'm more interested to see where it will go than trying to force it to go somewhere. Not that I don't think about the future. I think about you know where, what I'm going to be doing with my life. But in terms of creativity, I don't think. I mean, I just try to keep getting better. Yeah. I mean, I, whatever I do musically, I just want to be better at it. I just want to. Uh, continue to focus and to learn and to grow and to not take it for granted, you know, and not, uh, yeah. I mean, I, it could be that, that I'll never sell another popular record again, but I, I always want to keep growing as a musician, you know. Uh, um, that's important to me. Otherwise, it would be boring, and the magic of what it is for me that makes me want to get up and go on these ridiculously long tours and, you know, get run down and fly every day and sit in hotels is because it's all because of the interest in, in music which comes from that magical mysterious part and it's only magical and mysterious as long as I'm reaching for something that I don't understand otherwise it becomes rote it becomes boring you know it just becomes uh, going through the motions and that holds no interest for me I, you know I don't need the money you know I have more money than I need as it is there's no end to my thirst for for uh, the mystery of the beauty that God puts on.